People are looking at Tekken 8 like, oh my god, where are the exploding walls and shit coming from? Tell me that this doesn't look like something, guys, that we've seen. Guys, even the side swap. Look at this. Tell me who this big motherfucker looks like to you. Who does he look like? Look at his face. Who does he look like? I mean, he clearly, clearly looks like Heihachi. I mean, not to say that they copied off of Heihachi for him, but you can clearly see that he favors Heihachi. I mean, if you just cover his head up. I don't care what anybody says. They stole Elliot out of DOA and put, her, put him in Tekken and made it Leo. Um, Elliot was in DOA way before Leo even existed. And in my opinion, they stole this character for sure. Murray Rose, in my opinion, they stole the design from Murray Rose and made Lucky Chloe, in my opinion. Say what you want, but I definitely think, and obviously it's apparent that Tekken likes to bite off of DOA. I mean, look at uh, look at the whole system of Tekken 8 now, and look at who's working for Tekken. Fucking Shimbori is working for Tekken, the guy that was working on DOA, so. I mean, say what you want. So what makes Dead or Alive super different from Tekken? I made a video covering this on my channel, but I figured it might be a good, a good time to update this and talk about some differences. As you can see, you can still KBD in this game. It's possible. It's much easier, in my opinion, to execute. You move much quicker in this game. The reason why, like, it's it's not, for me, it's like movement is really important in this game, but it's also not at the same time. Because, like, as you can see here, you can free step, right? Which is kind of like stepping and Tekken and walking. They call it walking. Like, oh, I walked that. There's also a dedicated side step button. If somebody does like like this to me with Hayabusa, this move is linear, it does not track. In DOA, moves don't home, they track, right? So, that move, as you can see, Hayabusa, it's like a visual cue, right? That move is spinning in a circle. That move is gonna track, right? What else tracks? That move, as you can see, Hayabusa spinning, not to say all tracking moves have spinning animations, but this move tracks. His arm is going in a way that you would see that it's going to track, right? So th the same stuff applies in the same way, right? Like if you want somebody to stop sidestepping and stop trying to uh, free walk around your stuff, free step more appropriately, you do a tracking move, okay? Same thing applies to Tekken. I think the biggest thing with that is just how unforgiving it is to get hit by moves in Tekken opposed to DOA, at least in the normal state of the game. Like... There's not really a lot of times you're going to get hit on normal hit by moves in DOA and you're going to get killed for it. You know what I'm saying? The one thing I will say that I love about DOA over Tekken is that in my opinion, in my experience, in Tekken you get hit by moves when you're not supposed to get hit. Theoretically and visually. In Dead or Alive, if Hayabusa is over here, right? Hayate is not just going to spin around and hit me for no reason. Everything that happens in DOA, for the most part, 90% of the time, is supposed to happen. Tekken, I can't say the same for. You guys can see clips and clips for days and days and days of moves turning around and retracking opponents for no reason. It doesn't make sense to me. Tekken players try to justify it. If I'm behind you, your character should not be spinning in a 360 and following Okay, in my opinion, it just should not happen. That doesn't really happen here, right? Another big thing is the way throws work. Throws are completely unbreakable in this game unless it's a neutral throw. You have characters like Hayabusa that are grapplers. He has a four-frame neutral throw. It sounds super busted, but they are kind of easy to react to in a way. A lot of neutral throws don't really get broken. But if you have the eye, meaning that, like, you might as well try to break the throw if it comes out. Like, I'm always trying to break neutral throw in DOA. If I see the animation start up, because why not? You might as well. It's kind of like a lazy throw escape in Virtual Fighter. You might as well go for the neutral throw throw escape just in case somebody tries to do it. If I do anything that's considered like a command throw, if I do a forward grab, you're not breaking that. If I do a back grab, you're not breaking that. If I do a quarter circle back throw, you're not breaking that. If I do an Azuna drop, you're not breaking that. You get what I'm saying? In Tekken, there's only certain situations where throws are completely unbreakable, right? In this game... 95% of the time, if you get grabbed, it's guaranteed damage, right? It's more similar to Virtual Fighter in that sense, because a Virtual Fighter, even though you can break forward and back throws and neutral throws, on reaction, you have to guess in Virtual Fighter unless it's a neutral throw, like this game. I can do my neutral throw and it can be broken, just like Virtual Fighter. If I don't hit a direction for Virtual Fighter in the throw, for the throw. In Virtual Fighter, if I hit back or forward throw, if you don't break forward, I'm going to forward throw you. If you don't break back, I'm going to back throw you. In this game, you're just not breaking throws at all unless it's the new throw, right? Again, in Tekken, that doesn't apply. King is going to throw you, and he's going to do massive damage if you don't break Giant Swing, right? That's like 
you, but you, you can break it though. You have an option to break it. Granted, in Tekken 8, which as you guys can see, Shimbori obviously weighed in on the game somehow because there's a lot of situations in Tekken now where throws are actually guaranteed. For example, if you do a throw after somebody does a razor to you on guard, it's now guaranteed. That's never really been done before. If I threw you after a rage art in the old Tekken games, you can break that shit. Can't do that anymore. So that's some DOA shit in my opinion, right? Another big thing, the way moves function in this game on hit and on counter hit, right? And I'll bring up the frame data guide in case I need to do that. So the way moves function on hit and on counter hit. In Tekken, if you get hit on counter hit, what's 90% of the time that's going to happen? You get hit by something like this in Tekken, you're not... You're not guessing out of that, right? You're going to eat some crazy shit after that, which will probably look like this. That's usually going to be a guaranteed follow-up into some crazy shit, because now Tekken now has this. And now has exploding cars and exploding walls, which, as you can see, this is clearly where they got it from. This is where they got that shit from. People are looking at Tekken 8 like, oh my god, where are the exploding walls and shit coming from? Tell me that this doesn't look like something, guys, that we've seen. Guys, even the side swap. Look at this. In Tekken, you get hit by something and you're holding your gut. You like Victor's 1 plus 2, right? When they just get counter hit and you get that free combo. The difference is in this game, you do this, I can hold out of it. Get, granted, it's a guess. We're starting to play the guessing game, what's DOA is known for, right? So, you have the opportunity to get out. As you can see, Hayate in this game, he's got four bars a meter. It requires two of those to get pretty much a guaranteed way out of stun. You can get thrown out of it, but if you do what's called... Let me put my meter on so I'll show you guys. Just for the example with this game. If I do this, as you can see, break hold. It's not a regular hold like this where I have to be specific. High, low, mid kick, or mid punch, right? Now I can stop all those hit levels with one hold. Just one. You got to grab to beat it. That's, that's essentially the best way to beat it. Or you can bait it. You bait it, and then you can actually follow up on the recovery frames, and they can't do shit about it, right? So what I'm trying to say essentially with this, what's cool is that depending on the stun you hit somebody with, you also can't mash out. If I hit him with this, he's holding his gut. He's going down. He's got to hold or fall. That's it. He can't mash a button. Whereas if I hit him with something like this, see how he's recovering standing? He can essentially make me do my throw and pop me in the face after that. Granted, DOA has advanced stuff. Like if I were to do a certain stun, like as you can see right here on plus 33, I'll have time to whiff a throw and keep my advantage in some situations, right? There's like secret stuff that's in-depth in the game, but that's not really the point of the video. What I'm trying to talk about is really the similarities, but I'm just also trying to school you guys with some in-depth stuff as well. Another thing that's really different is the hold system, which we're going to talk about. So something that I feel like people don't utilize a lot in Tekken, which I always found was weird, like maybe Tekken 8, it's a little different because throws are a little better in Tekken 8, and you can grab parries and it's guaranteed you can't break it. This game is the same way, so let me show you. If I have him react to doing a hold, right imagine this is dragon off imagine this is dragon off 92 right um imagine i hit dragon off with something like this and he i hit him with like something like that right i hit him with like a df1 he can parry after that right he can grab my punch same thing applies here instead just like tekken now you can get thrown for free into some shit like that so just simply to put it i can do that that's like something that somebody would do to you in tekken now that was never really there before the game is Kind of similar to Tekken 8. Before, in the old ones, not really. You know what I'm saying? But in this game, DOA 6 and Tekken 8 kind of translates. So we already have the environmental stuff. We got some of the hold stuff, which, you know, they call them parries in Tekken. Not every character has a parry. Every character has the ability to hold in DOA, though. That's universal to everybody in the cast. It's one of the biggest things that I think that players that come to DOA struggle with that they just can't grasp because it's so unique to this game. The hold system can be done at both neutral and in stun. So I'm going to have them do a uh, critical hold because this is what's called a critical hold. So we have regular holds at neutral, right? But you can hold in a critical state. What's a critical state? Right in your fucking mouth. Look on the left side of the screen. See critical hit? Critical hit. Now he's in a critical state. So because he's in critical, he's limited to what he can do. He can't strike any longer unless I let him out of the stun, right? So... I'll put him on critical hold, we'll do normal, we'll do normal, and we'll do, um, we'll do a mid punch hold. See how he's countering now? What's the counterplay to that? Get the fuck over here. What's the counterplay to that? Now you're gonna go into this F-150. Now this is gonna happen. You can die in this fucking game for making a bad decision. I want y'all to realize that... 
Tekken did this for a reason. Man, one of the biggest things that grinds my gears about people that don't know this game. I know you guys have heard it. Ah, who wants to play a game where you can just counter? You can spam counters. Motherfucker, go ahead. Let me, let me, go ahead. Go ahead. Do that shit. The way that 3D fighting games, at least Tekken and DOA, because they're the only ones that have really had, like, new entries in the last couple years. So... Essentially, what I'm trying to say is that the combo structure is not as different as you guys think it is. You learn your screw, which is in this game is called a bound, right? And then you just go in from there. You can learn combos in this game, you can learn them in any game, in my opinion. We'll just go with this one for now. Here we go. This is max. That's max hits. 30 hits. Don't think that that's all guaranteed. Listen, this is all he has to do. Okay? This is all he has to do. To stop this look so it's not guaranteed by any means but this is where the mind game comes in the fuck over here you get what i'm saying now you're gonna start to die now you're gonna get by this so yeah you get juggled more in this game but that isn't guaranteed it's a mind game the the biggest difference between this game and tekken in my opinion is the mind games you can get so creative with the mind games in this game, somebody can literally fuck with your head by doing the most simple stuff. Think about it. Think about it. You can hold, right? You can hold whatever you want. But what if they don't? What if they held the first five times and the sixth time they decide not to and you're, you're grab whips and they fucking break blow you and you die? What if they know that you know that and then they do the other thing? What if they know that you know that and they know that you know that? It's, it's, it never stops, I'm telling you. Even though it's just a 50-50, it's so much bigger than a 50-50. You get what I'm saying? They, like, somebody can be in your head and just fuck you up. Okay, they can be like, I know that he knows this. So because I know that he knows this, I'm going to do the other thing. It's crazy, bro. It's a crazy mind game, dog. It's scary. If you can really get past the titties and all the other stuff, DOA is deeper than it looks. I'm telling you. Also, another big thing about this game that you guys have to understand is just like in Tekken, right? You punish certain things with throws now, like rage arts and stuff like that, power crushes. In this game, you use your throws to punish things that are unsafe on block. Things that are minus seven and up, depending on the character you use. And grapplers can punish your minus seven moves on block with a six frame forward throw because they have quicker throws. That's another thing about grapplers in this game, Hayabusa, Bass. They have four frame neutral throws, six frame forward throws. Regular characters have slower throws by one frame, so I can't punish something that's minus seven with Hayate. It's gotta be minus eight to punish because I have a slower throw, you get what I'm saying? That is another big thing. Now listen, there are some occurrences where moves are unsafe on guard to the point where you can strike punish them if they're really, really unsafe. But generally, your general form of punishment in this game is gonna be throw punishment. That's another thing that's really different for Tekken players. They cannot understand that, I feel like. Bitch! So as you can see, you can break throws in this game, but I kept doing neutral throws because I'm rusty in this game, and I just, I haven't seen this stuff in a while, I've been playing a lot of Tekken, but I kept neutral throwing because it's not clicking to hit forward grab right now.